Hello everyone, welcome to uh, today's tutorial. Like this is our second tutorial for ESNet. And for this time, we'll be firstly having a warm up session, and then we'll be going to the collab session that will be having interactive jobs and showing how we can add new jobs there. And noted that we'll be uh, showing today how to add new tasks and new models to our ESGNet. And I'm Jiatong Shi, and uh, this is my email. So for today's agenda, uh, what we'll be focusing majorly is uh, on the why ESGNet can support different switch tasks. And then we'll be con uh, continue to discuss what components we need for a new task in ESGNet. For today's talk, we'll be going through the ASV spoof, which is anti-spoofing uh, to recognize the, whether the speech is a synthesis or not. So we'll be going through the task and uh, get briefly how uh, the mechanism is working for the ASV spoof. And at last, we'll be going to the collab and going through the whole session there. And noted that you will be also finish some like uh, uh, to fill some blank uh, into the original task so that you can participate in the interactive jobs and know how to add a new task from uh, each of the procedure. So before the talk, I want to get your attention that basically since we follow almost the same installation procedure of ESNet, as Monday's tutorial, we'll be not going through that part today. And please start the collab early and execute the like installation procedures ahead of time. And basically you can start to do the clicks during the first examination period, which is now. And because like uh, for the followings, we won't be going through that part and that will be taking time. So yeah, it will be better for you to start it early. And also today we'll be modifying several lines of source code, uh, which will be potentially be lost uh, when like is disconnected from the collab. Therefore, like please try to save your modification in a separate text file uh, so as to avoid losing them. So basically we will be having a, just a few lines so you don't be worried like you have multiple places to be added. So that will be very difficult to trace, but I think basically just a single text file will be fine. But we also recommend you going through like uh, with your own GitHub account if, and fork it into your own space if you have the experience in, in that. But if you do not have the experience, I do not suggest you to learn it now because we have the other focus for now. So please just uh, uh, follow in our procedure. That is fine. But just save it in a separate text file. Okay. So in terms of ESNet research, I kind of uh, listed some of the speech processing tasks. There's like uh, even more than that, but I think uh, this is almost like uh, most the uh, major focus we now like in the speech field. And uh, basically including like the speech recognition, I recognize your voice and like uh, going to the speech synthesis that try to like uh, convert the text into speech and doing the voice conversion that trying to convert your voice into another personalities and the speaker recognition, language jacket recognition to recognize the speaker and language there and speech emotion recognition, speaker dilation and so on and so forth. So basically uh, in terms of that, all the right, all the like the, uh, uh, Font with the right font. So basically it's showing that we have already supported in the ESNet already. Uh, in terms of that, like uh, for example, the speed recognition, synthesis conversion, emotion recognition, dialization, enhancement, and so on. So basically all of these tasks are already supported in ESNet. There are still some uh, missing plug and which is also like we are quite encouraged that you guys to be involving in that. So if you are interested in some of the projects that uh, trying to solve in the, for example, speaker recognition, spoken dialogue system, then we'll be very glad to that you can join our team and we can continue to the discussion. And noted that today's talk actually, today's tutorial is actually one of the basis to like formulate those kinds of new tasks into the ESNet. So why ESNet can support so many like different formats of the speech task and so on. So for that purpose, like basically we are having a uniform design and uniform like a uh, uh, software design. So basically all the things can be uh, converted into a unified mathematical form, like which is from the sequence X to sequence Y from the transformation F. And in terms of that, uh, the ESNet is kind of acting as a toolkit in the middle and in the X sequence, we have the speech, text, English speech, and noisy speech. Well, for the uh, output sequence, we have the text, speech, and German text, and clean speech. So when the input is speech and output is text, it's clearly that like it's the ASR task, like the speech recognition task. And if the input is text and output is speech, we'll be having the text to speech, which is a synthesis task. And for the English speech and output is German text, we'll be doing as a speech translation. Well, for the other one, like noisy 
English speech and the uh, clean speech uh, as the output will be uh, getting into the speech enhancement and separation and so on. So in terms of that, what component we need for new task in ESM? So in short, we kind of have two, two components there. Like one is the task library, which is the core procedure provided in the task, usually training and inference and so on. Well, for, there will also have a recipe session and we have the recommend stage for the task, usually including data preparation, formatting, preprocess, training, inference, and evaluation as the major stages. You have already had the experience with the post tutorial, so I won't be kind of going more details into that. But uh, I think in general, like, uh, it's kind of a recipe session will be corresponding to a specific data set. <clears throat> then in the later spec, we'll be continue to discuss like uh, uh, what in the task library. And this is also like what we will focus today. Uh, basically, there will be four major components that will be used um, primarily, like uh, including the binary folder, which will be have the major entry of the library that all the functions need to be using from here, like in the ESN. So basically, including the training, inference, and sometimes with the collect stats and so on. And in the other side, we have also have the file I.O., which will be uh, presenting as an input-output stream for different uh, kinds of data like the tags we have the different uh, kind of tags and the sounds and uh, rttm is a rich format of the speech input like will be noted the speaker like the information and something like that and will be also having some uh, noisy to be uh, encoded in the rttm and so on and for the other side we also like uh, intended to incorporate the music structure like the music xml and music like some midi style and music something like that so this is also our like in, in progress work but for the other side, like the, for the task part, like basically the major step uh, here is like to exe uh, execute in the task, like uh, the training of the whole procedure. So the task is kind of uh, like, you uh, usually it's uh, like a specific uh, uh, design for the corresponding task. For example, if we had ASR, we, you can see that in the task folder, we have the ASR.py and we have the SVS.py, which is for synthesis with synthesis. We have the like the TDS.py, which is for text-to-speech. And for here, which, which we will be focusing on ASV spoof. So we'll be have the ASV spoof.py, which is for the ASV spoof.task here. And later, uh, the case is that we also have the task name folder. So for example, the ASR, TTS, STS, UDIR, which is for the data edition. And this is for the task specific modules and uh, their corresponding loss calculation. So usually like we will be cut construct the computational graph from this task folder. For example, the ASR will have the encoder decoder architecture, which we have discussed in the Monday's tutorial. And for the later case that there's also like many other folders that won't be touched today, but they're also important, but uh, normally like we can just keep it as there. So basically we'll be using them uh, for just for using them today. But if you want to learn more, you can always like uh, refer to our, either the web page, we have the whole web page for the toolkits. And also like you can go to the source code and basically there will be also like um, many different information contents in that. Cool. So in the later space, we will also like have the recipe session. Uh, firstly, we will be having the explicit recipe for a specific corpus, and we already touched that on Monday. So I will be skipping it for today, but if you do not need to, so basically you do not need to worry about this today. So because we will be, won't be touching that, but uh, given that you are already having a tutorial on Monday, so I think it will be already enough. And for the second part, we'll be having a template that includes all the recommended stage for the corresponding tasks. So for today, we'll be prepared like 99% of it, but need some of your input to like make it uh, functioning and so on. But in general, that that will be taking the, all the stages. So if you remember, like in the Monday's tutorial, we'll be you'll be having like the case, like the for example, the clock stats and the format web SAP and uh, speed perturbation and so on. Then this all formulate that just recommend stage in ASR tasks. And for our specific tasks, we'll be having design specific tasks uh, stages. But for here, like for today's talk specifically, we'll, we are already designing the variable come to make it the simplest uh, uh, template so that you do not need to worry too much about that. But it's still like a 400 lines, so it's not a very simple one. So in general, but it's kind of already the simplest uh, to be the recommended stage in ESPN. So, okay, so for here, we'll be going towards the 
uh, specific text we want to handle in that basically is a speaker replication anti spoofing test. And this is a problem kind of this concern like the basically discern like the spoofing attacks from the human natural speech. And so here, like the basic uh, concept is here, like we have a speech, either it's real or fake, and then we want to um, kind of decide whether it's real or fake. So basically, this is kind of becoming very important in recent days because like, you know, like we have the deep fake in the speech area as well. Like we can do the voice conversion that can be convert your voice into the other voice. And given that some voice can be using as the evidence for the, uh, for the court and also like some specific scenarios. So actually that will be very important for you to distinguish like whether this is uh, fake or not. If it's fake that we need to like do some other procedure, like we need to have more confidence to have, get other evidence and so on. So it's very important for nowadays. And in terms of the evaluation period, like we will be focusing on the equal error rate specifically. And I won't be going too details into that. So if you want to like go into the specific, okay, why, how it is calculated and so on. So you can refer to this link and there's also plenty of the material on the, on the internet. So you can just trace them. And, but for here, like, uh, I just want to let you know that basically the lower the, uh, the better, like error rates, right? So basically the lower the better. Okay, so now we have more time for the collab and any questions? Cool. So if we do not have other questions, we'll be going through the collab today. But noted that for now, for today, we won't be going too details into the uh, collab. Like uh, uh, instead of like the Monday's uh, version, like we will be having go through all the interactive jobs at the time. But this time, we'll be just telling you what you want to do for here. And later, <clears throat> you are supposed to be using like, um, I think it's 40 or 5, for 50 minutes like to be solving this uh, specific uh, things and to make it running. But notice that we will make it very, kind of trying to make it as easy as possible. So all the stuff here is already like, uh, only like a sp specific lines you need to modify to reach the uh, ultimate goal here. So uh, firstly, like uh, we have the introduction and we also would like to do, would like to thank uh, uh, Yu Zhang, uh, which is like a PhD student at uh, University of Rochester. And he actually have, uh, helps a lot like over the hands-on tutorial and sharing his knowledge on the specific text, which is the anti-spoofing today. Cool. And for this time as, as well, like we'll be having the checkpoints that you will be need to submit uh, before the class ending. And at the, at the same time, like there will be several like the exercise, which is after the tutorial that you can finish it later. And basically you can just submit the PDF file like uh, with your completed notebook to the Grayscope and which is exactly the same format as the, as the Manda tutorial. So you plan to have worry about that. And for the objectives today, like basically after this tutorial, you're expected to know like how to add new tasks in ES9.2 and how to add new modules in ES9.2 and how to create a new recipes or the template of a new task from scratch. So basically this goal is actually a bit ambitious because ES9 is so complicated, uh, but as, at the same time, like it's also very comprehensive to have different components uh, to be making it working for different functionality. But for here, we'll be trying to make it as simple as possible. And by the same time, we already have implemented uh, most of the code for you. So basically, you just need to fill a few lines of the code. But if you want to learn more, like basically, you can go in through the, uh, our like comparison there, like we'll be showing later. And you can know like the whole structure of if you want to add a new task, how did you want to like doing that? And for the start, like uh, please execute in this print date and time that because that will be using for your grading purpose. And for the installation specifically, almost like uh, it's the same procedure as your first tutorial. So I won't be going too much details over here. I will be skipping this today, but, but you are expected to already run it during my first explanation session. And here, like uh, this is for today's main purpose that like, we want to provide you and what you need to proceed over that. And we have like provided most of the files needed for the ASV spoof task. So you do not need to add any additional files essentially. But however, notice that some of the files are not com uh, like complete. So I need your permission to proceed. Oh, sorry, there is a typo here. And for a quick overview of the whole layout of the new test, you can just click this link and I will be clicking this link as well. 
at the same time, so you can have an overview. So if you check this one, you'll be seeing that, okay, this is, I have 50 changed files and with 2000 lines, but don't be afraid of that. So basically most of them are, can be essentially the same as the, uh, as the other tests. So if you want to create a new test, most of the lines you can just copy and paste and that will be fine. And in terms of the different scenarios, then it will become have different cases, but I won't be going too much details for this uh, page today. We'll be uh, going back here. And basically as elaborated in the warming up, we are showing that there are like two uh, basic components for a new task in the ESNet, which is a task library and the corresponding recipe setups. And for the following section, we'll be briefly show the overall layout of adding the AS Facebook task in the ESNet. And basically the listed file are most of the minimum requirements that the new tags will notice. So basically, if you just want to add a new tag, this is kind of the basic limitation here. So you need to add all the files, at least uh, most of the files here to be added for new task. So here, like we are showing it in two folds. Firstly, the task library, which is located in the ESNet 2, which is the second version. And already come, we already come kind of explained that. So basically, we recommend you now to focus on the ESNet 2 version. And basically, there is a, like the binary folder, as I noted, like it's a, kind of the main entry point that we get for the specific task. And we'll be also have the ASV spoof, which is the specific uh, like a, uh, example of how to show in the whole model here like basically the we can see the decoder and logs and we also have the ESN model which is the basic phase here and know that if you uh check that basically we have the checkpoint four checkpoint three like uh, as a like bracket uh, uh basically bracket as the uh, following by the specific files because it's kind of showing that okay if you want to pass this specific checkpoint, you need to modify this file to be make it uh, completed. So uh, that will be make your life easier to be <laughs> accomplish that. And for the later spaces, like the task part will be having the whole like task initialization and also model build up and so on, training and so on. Okay, so to help you understand more, we will recommend you to check out the layout of other tasks as well, like the ASR, TPS, ST, and so on to understand how the code base is functioning. But here is the most, the simplest one, I will say. And later in the recipe for ASV spoof, uh, which is another set of the, uh, like the complete, uh, I mean, to complete the recipe here, like uh, basically complete the task here. And uh, we need to like have the following, which is a list of file adding to the ESNet as well. Like this is the template and we have the ASV spoof one, uh, ASV spoof .sh, uh, something like that. And we have the ESNet tutorial here as well. And okay, so there's a, actually there's an issue here. Like I, I will be change it very soon here. So note that this is actually not from, uh, so it's kind of separated. So it is outside of the template. So it's not exactly this template here. Cool. And note that because of the same link, like the ASV spool.sh for this one and this one, which we both for the checkpoint one, is essentially the same for checkpoint two. Uh, cool. And for the later stage, we'll be doing start with the ASV spoof data preparation. And as discussed in the warm up session, ASV spoof aims to conduct a binary classification. And as a task layout is a bit difficult to be like uh, uh, compared to the ASR task, we'll be touching uh, here today to keep the simplicity. We still use the exact the same file as the first tutorial, which is the web.scp text and alternate to speaker and speaker to authors. And but on the other hand, we change the format of task uh, text into the authors ID plus one and zero. And this what zero means that is actually the real speech and once that is a fake speech from the synthesizer. So which make it, uh, makes makes our life quite easy. So we can directly use in the format data and so on. But if you have different uh, layouts, probably you'll need to change it a bit to be uh, formulated into your own structure. So, but that will be making it quite difficult like uh, in terms of the layout uh, to be using the existing method from Kaudi. So uh, if you want to learn more, you can, Either check, for example, the dialization recipe or the speech translation recipe, and essentially their like uh, output is not the same as the uh, normal ASR task. So that will be making some of you, like uh, hints of how to make such kind kind of task to be functioning in our cases. And later we have the download data set. 
And basically, this is a subset of the ASB Spoof 2020, uh, 2019 challenge here. So you'll be following that and to follow to formulate the whole structure here. And in terms of the prepared data, we'll be uh, we already make the test template to be simple as possible. So the data preparation will be only two stages. Will be much uh, easier than the original task in the ASR. You, if you remember, there there's also like to, uh, to build up the tokenizer, and also you want to build up like the speed preparation over the time, remove long short alterses, and so on. But for here, we only have two stages. Like the first one is the basic data preparation and formulating the data into the structure that we have uh, defined here. And also the later cases is to try to like uh, go through the wave format that like to format the wave into our uh, like a favorable like structure. And later for the ASV spoof clock stats, which is come to the like the checkpoint one. So similar to the previous tutorial, like we need to collect the statistics for the data, like not only for the batching, but also for the uh I mean, getting the overall, like the global mean and variance over the data so that we can do the normalization later. And basically in this process, like the data will be passed into an iteratable, like um, uh, uh, louder. So however, like remember that the text file is no longer the format as an ASR recipe. Therefore we need to use another data louder to load the corresponding information. Unfortunately, we have a wide range of data louders for choices, which is listed here, uh, if you check here. Cool. Yeah, you can see that we have lots of different uh, like uh, data structures here. If you see in details, and there's like a key here, which is a note that how we can call these specific data types. And for each of the types, we will be having the like uh, uh, how this is kind of going through the data. Like okay, the audio format types and like the county louder and also like the text int and uh, we'll be have the utterance ID and with the int following with that. And we also have CSV int and we'll be utterance ID and uh, which separated by comma. So there we, have, we already have like different kinds of format, right? So here like uh, uh, using this, we can uh, start to build up like uh, to choose like which correct fo file format and replace the replacement in the ASVSpoof.sh. So the exact uh, part we are referring to is like the Yes, so if you see the differences, like actually we have this whole files into that. And if you search for the replace me, yes. So notice that we already, we have four uh, parts to be doing the replace me. You know, the second, you can see here. First one is for the collect stats, which is in the stage three. And we also have the later, to at the training as well. So some students have the issue with, for example, this have an actual blank here. So which uh, basically is because that you can see that we basically by using the concatenation of the string over the uh, options here, which is have a variable here. And notice that this variable is essentially a string. So in case that we want to separate it out like different uh, uh, options here, we need to have an actual space at the end so that we can separate it out. So if you can see like we firstly have these options and then later we use these options here and we are just using it as a string. And if we have this uh, blank, we can separate it out. If we do not have the blank, that will be making the whole uh, config to be connected together. Like for example, this train data pass and name and type will be connected directly to the shape file. And that will be making the data not able to be pa pa like passed into uh, different uh, uh, arguments and so on. So we'll be following this part. Uh, we need to have extra space here. Cool. But here we won't be wait for you like to be uh, going through it now. So we'll be leaving some time for you to investigate that. But for now, like we'll be continue for the later cases and uh, trying to discuss the whole section here. And later you can fix like uh, this part on your own. Okay, so after I finish this class test, we'll be going to the model part. And in this section, we'll be defined the ASV spoof model and use the model to conduct the training of ASV spoof task. But either understanding here, we will first use an encoder to convert the speech 
features into a hidden representation and you then use the decoder to conduct the classification. And firstly, we are going to focus in on the encoder part. So this have a long history over the discussion of speech encoder in our community and given the sequential perspective, people firstly investigate like recurrent neural networks, recurrent neural networks. And then more recently, we are focusing on the conformer block, which I already like discussed on Monday, uh, which is kind of basically an extension now to the transformer blocks. And in the previous setting, we use a, a transformer block to collect stats. However, this time we will want to switch it to the conformer. To make it happen, so we basically want to like um, uh, using the already like uh, uh, already implemented the conformer in the ESR part. So this is like a very uh, a very good benefit from using ESNet. So basically, we have the very good code re reusability. And in terms of the doing that, we already support the conformer block in the ESR part. So it is quite easy to import it into the new task. So in the ESNet, uh, adding models that we already have can be as simple as two lines of code. So please add lines directly to here. And I will be showing the place uh, like uh, in, in this file, in this differences as well. Oh, oh I see. It's because that is it's not there. So. I need to first be going to the here, right? Cool. From here, you can see that we have the to-do here. And basically, it will be, firstly, you need to import it from the conformer block encoder, and which you can follow the exact. Actually, there is already an example here. So you can follow here and we import the conformer block. And then in the later space, in line number 84, you will be at the extra line and to make it a conformer option. And notice that the key here, you can see the key here is transformer and you can use conformer key as a key as well for here. Basically, you need to use that because we already set up the config file for that. So it will be recommend you to just use the conformer option here to make it working. Cool. And We'll be not waiting for you this time as well, like as, as I just explained. So basically, we'll be continuing for the next section, and uh, we'll be having a lot of time later. So you can feel free to debugging on your own, and we can discuss it. Like uh, if you have any other questions later. So later for the case, like we are uh, targeting at the decoder here. In this stage, we'll be finally start the training. As the previous tutorial, you can use the uh, tensorflow to monitor the process. You can execute this one to monitor the process. But if you do not want to do that, you can just skip this as well. It is the, it's just an optional like procedure you want to do that. So after, after finish the encoder, we also need to create a decoder to conduct prediction. And this like the decoder will be generated hidden representation. And we want to add a simple decoder to conduct the mean pooling over all hidden representation at the time axis. And there will be another linear layer to conduct the model into a final classification task. And basically, you need to fill the missing part into this specific file and to finally start the training. For people who are not familiar with the PyTorch, please refer to the lit, uh, like related resources here. Like probably you can basically you can all this information should be enough for you to build the linear decoder. Notice that there is a final sigmoid you need to apply to the uh, to the prediction because that is very important to be make sure that you are using you are pre predicting the like probability to use the binary uh, cross entropy loss in the PyTorch. So after that, you'll be able to run in this one and we'll be making it running. So this time we're also going to the specific part of that so that to show that where you need to add. So if you go to the linear decoder here, you'll be saying, okay, there we have like uh, different to-dos. Firstly, we want to initialize a linear layer and then we will be compute the mean over time domain and then apply a projection layer, which is basically a linear layer we defined here. And later we'll be change the like return value with sigma function accordingly and as the output. Cool. And given that, we'll be going to the other part. So firstly, we'll be here going to the model inference as the next section. And for this model inference, as the training is finished, we expect it to conduct the AS based proof on the test side. And to approach that, we we'll first have to finish the inference code base. And for the our test specifically, we need the log probability of the prediction to compute the equal error rate. Therefore, the output should be a float number for each utterances. And please fill the missing parts with to-dos here. 
And so that will be conducting the specific uh, evaluation here. And if we go to this section, let me go to this section. Okay, so this is the file that we are referring to. And if you go to here, you can see that we actually have the to do's here. Note that this is for exercise two, so you do not need to like fill the numbers here. You just go into this, fill this part, and then this will be fine to get the final result. So notice that this result is uh, applying a sigmoid at the last, but for the final prediction, we're expecting to have a log probability. So uh, it will be expected that you, after you get this uh, probability from the output, you need to return a float number and we supply a, a EXP to make it like into the normal log probability. Like, oh, sorry, the, you, you need to apply a log, a log procedure to make it into the log probability. Cool. So later for the scoring, so basically we have, we have already prepared the scoring scripts for you. So you can directly get the EER by after finish all the previous procedures and we'll be getting the final rate without here. And I have like a few uh, lines for the uh, like a exercise here as well. So in the data you just download, we already have like some extra data for the training and please try to combine them with the training set and then conduct the experiments with the augmented set. You can also encourage you to change the model configuration. Basically, if you achieve a better equal error rate than the previous experiment, you can get the bonus point here. And uh, which basically is uh, exactly quite similar to the last time, like uh, the last tutorial we have, like we want we want you to build that up uh, like a set from scratch. I noted that basically uh, this is quite a, a little bit different from the original ASR probably or the data format is a bit changed, right? Well, for the exercise two, uh, this is because like one major issue for here for the speech and spoken research is the generalization to unseen attacks. So noted that actually the training and test that we have, we are using like specific uh, uh, AS or, or original real speech and also the synthesis speech from uh, one of the synthesizer. But for the actually for the output specifically, actually we are hiding like a different uh, synthesizer, uh, which is not the same as the training set. So essentially, like we need to generalize that to the unseen task, right? So um, basically, the synthesis methods that are not seen in the training and uh, untest spoofing models. So in fact, uh, like uh, for here, the test set in our uh, scenario is exactly the same case. Recently, there's a, like a, a one case, a one class learning method that compacts a newer, like natural speech representation and separate them from the fixed speech with a certain merging and then the embedding space. So we'll actually have implement the AM, which is a, like a generalized version of the one class, like uh, softmax here. And we're expecting you to like finish this whole OC softmax loss. And you can follow the tools in the, to implement the method, but it's kind of uh, basically you can, you need to also change the config to make it uh, like a working into the training. And if you successfully implement the OC softmax and get similar or better ER, you can get a bonus point here. Cool. So this is uh, the part of all my talks for today. And uh, you're expecting to finish all the like the in-class checkpoints uh, in this class later. And thank you very much. And so this is the question time. <laughs>